Hi, it's Warren Hewitt here. Hope you're doing marvellously well. Please, as ever, subscribe. Go to producelikeapro.com, sign up for the email list, and now there is a monthly version of the Academy. Or you can try the 14-day free trial, whatever you want to do. I've interviewed a lot of really amazing producers and engineers and mixers, and one of the things that seems to hold true through so many of them, and also mirrors my experience, is this. Don't debate, create. Now, I'll say it one more time. Don't debate, create. I was talking to Shelley about this. In fact, I remember driving back from a session frustrated a long time ago, maybe four or five years ago, and on my drive back up to my house, I called Shelley and I just told him how I, as an engineer, had sat there and witnessed the producer on the project fighting with the artist for around about an hour and a half for a bass idea. And this was a well-known producer with a well-known artist, and I'm sitting there like, listening to them fight about a baseline idea. And yeah, it was kind of a crazy baseline idea that didn't seem to make any sense and probably would have ruined the drum groove. But it seemed that they were both trying to prove a point. The producer was trying to prove, without hearing it, that it wouldn't work and it would ruin the drum groove. And the bass player was trying to prove that, no, it would take the song to a whole new area and only, if only he would let him indulge it. And eventually, after the good hour and a half or two hours, the bass player did go in and play his part. There I was, driving back from the session, probably running a couple of hours late because of this, calling Shelley, recounting the story. And of course, he burst into laughter and told me, I don't know, 10 similar stories of him working with under producers and engineer and watching the producers fight with the artist. And we both just came to this conclusion that, you know, just create, don't debate everything. The part that the bass player was wanting to do was approximately 30 seconds long. It was a chorus groove. And as Shelley said to me, and he said just the other night, that 30 seconds would easily have told us whether it was gonna work or not. The bass player could have come in with the drummer, sat down, they could have played it back, we could listen to the before and after versions, and trust me, within five minutes, we would have known what was great. All of the time, all you have to do is just try the idea out. It's so much quicker to just go back into a live room, even with a full band, just go back in there and track the idea. If the tempo's wrong and you're tracking and somebody thinks it should go faster, just try it faster. If it's too fast and you want to slow it down, do that. The point is ideas are so much easier to hear when they're recorded. When they're being discussed and debated, they're in this sort of fictitious world of you know, oh, will it work? Won't it work? No, you're wrong. No, I'm right. You're wrong. Whatever. There's just all this fighting going on, which can be easily solved just by trying the idea. So our jobs as producers and engineers, and really just kind of as mentors sometimes to artists, because they're looking up to us in many, many situations. Lots of times over the last few years, the artist I'm working with, it's their first ever time in a studio. Even with bands that went on to become successful, it's their first time ever being recorded outside of a home studio environment or from doing their own demos. This is the next step up for them. So yes, they can be opinionated. They do come in with great or crazy ideas, but they're looking to us for leadership and support. So the best way to do that is to provide them with an artistic environment where they can express themselves, where they are free to try out ideas. The biggest thing you'll gain from this philosophy, create, don't debate, the biggest thing you'll find about this is that the artist will trust you. They will feel secure. They will bring ideas to you because the best ideas can be the craziest thing and explaining them verbally is not the same as hearing them. As obvious as that might sound, if I was to describe to you like Ichiku Park, one of the most famous instances of phasing ever, where the whole track goes If I just describe that, that just sounds like the stupidest thing ever. As the words left my mouth, it sounded like the stupidest thing ever. But when you listen to the track, it's absolutely unbelievable. So, create, don't debate. You'll gain so much from it. You'll learn new ideas because artists, no matter how inexperienced they are, are very creative people. So they will teach you new techniques that you can apply to other recordings. So that's great. And secondly, and most importantly, the artist will trust you 
and will feel like it's a safe place for them to express their creative ideas and they will want to continue to work with you so you'll build a career. Well, as ever, have a marvelous time recording and mixing. Please subscribe, go to producelikeapro.com, sign up for the email list, and as I was saying earlier, we have a 14-day free trial of the Academy, and we also now have a monthly subscription as well. Please like, share, and leave loads of comments because it's really great to hear what your particular experience is because I feel like everybody has experienced this. Unfortunately, a lot of the time in the negative. I hear too many stories about artists and producers fighting about this stuff. But give us some experiences here. Let's have a great discussion about it. Thank you ever so much for watching and uh, have a marvelous time recording and mixing.